Hey guys, Dan here. Welcome to Dan Reviews It, and uh, this is uh, a new feature that we just started uh, a little bit ago called Classic TV Rewind. And uh, I'm going to be looking basically at shows throughout the history of television from the very, very beginnings through uh, the present day. And I'll be looking at series on the whole. Uh, sometimes I'll be looking season by season um, and select TV shows. I might do episode by episode commentary, uh, which I've started to do that a little bit over the years with uh, things like Star Trek and The X-Files. Um, but here we are back in the 1952 groove. The, the first show that we did for the classic TV rewind was the Abbott and Costello show. I am a huge fan of their uh, work, so I thought I would dive in with one of the early, early classics, uh, the Abbott and Costello show. So, while I was in that 1952 kind of a mode, uh, I watched at the same time as I was watching Abbott and Costello, Mr. and Mrs. North. Um, these are husband and wife detectives, uh, kind of like Heart to Heart was a little bit later on. Um, I guess you could even say stuff like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, maybe. Um, but this is uh, a 1952 to 1954 show, which actually, same as Abbott and Costello, it only ran two years. Uh, this one actually ran on two different networks, though. Abbott and Costello was syndicated. Uh, so this ran on two different networks. First, uh, the first season was on uh, CBS, and then it moved to NBC for season two. That was very commonplace back then. A lot of shows would sort of go from one network to the next. We don't see that very much anymore, um, although this year we did see it with Brooklyn Nine-Nine, uh, which was awesome to see uh, because that's one of my favorite current shows. It ran on Fox for years, I think five years, um, and now it's on NBC. Um, so we do see it, you know, sometimes. Uh, Scrubs is another recent example. They, they moved the last season um, over to ABC from NBC. Um, but, uh, here we have the, uh, the original husband and wife detective team, Mr. and Mrs. North. So, this, uh, DVD that I've held up, this is very cheap, by the way, it's like 10 bucks on Amazon. Um, it's four discs, there were 57 episodes total, this has 50 on it. Um, and I, I saw that YouTube has a select, uh, number of episodes of this show, um, because they've mostly fallen into the public domain, so you can just run them you know, on your YouTube channel with no, uh, no lawsuits or anything, but, um, th like, three or four of the ones on YouTube are not on this set. I didn't delve that far into it. I think watching 50 episodes <laughs> was plenty for this show. So, uh, let's talk a, a little bit about the history of the show, and then we'll go more into detail. And I was saying, um, you know, with the Abbott and Costello, something that's, that's going to help me with these uh, classic TV Rewind podcasts is this encyclopedia of television shows. It goes through 2007. Uh, there's actually a supplement that just came out, I think, last year that goes up to, like, 2017. Um, but uh, this has pretty much every show that's ever been on up through 2002. Um, and there's also another book that uh, I've talked about before called uh, 1001 TV shows you must watch before you die. We haven't really delved into that yet uh, on my channel, except for Roseanne, uh, because uh, Abbott and Costello is not even in there, believe it or not. Um, but you've got... Okay, so Mr. and Mrs. North started as a book series. There are 26 books in this series about a husband and wife detective named Mr. and Mrs. North. So that was like in the early 1900s, and then it became a radio show for about 15 years, um, and that was, uh, I think, started in 1942 or so. But then in the early days of television, there were two, uh, like, play versions, because there was also an early 40s film version of Mr. and Mrs. North. So early 40s, like, these books were being adapted. It was very popular, you know, on the radio show and uh, the movie that came out. And so in 1946, now this is like super, super early days of television, right? Um, they did an experimental uh, adaptation of the Broadway show of Mr. and Mrs. North. Um, and, you know, basically, same thing. Uh, it was Jerry and Pamela, which uh, it... In the show that I watched, it was, uh, was it Pam? Yeah, Pam. Oh, they called her Pam. Yeah, but they didn't call her Pamela. Um, so anyway. And then there was a 1949, uh, test movie on NBC, um, on TV that was, uh, an adaptation of the radio show. So, 
a couple of like early things, but none of those starred the people that would star in the successful TV show. Richard Denning and Barbara Britton played the title characters, and Richard Denning, uh, for you I Love Lucy fans, he was the husband uh, on the Lucille Ball radio show My Favorite Husband, which aired um, throughout the 40s and uh, I guess maybe in the very, very early 50s uh, before I Love Lucy came on. Um, so it was interesting to see that because I have heard probably... 20 of the My Favorite Husband radio shows because each of the discs of I Love Lucy has one of the radio shows on it. So I was very familiar with Richard Denning's voice uh, through that. And here, you know, it's a little different because it's more of a drama. Um, so before before I delve into the specifics of uh, the show itself, um, so let's talk about the plot of it and then I'll sort of give my review. Um, so basically, these guys are husband and wife um, and they're just, they're not really cops, they're not detectives. He is a mystery writer, um, and she, you know, as it was in the 50s typically, is a homemaker, um, although they don't have any kids, so it's, you know, she's not a mother, she's just, you know, uh, a homemaker in that regard. Um, and they, they live in a nice apartment in New York, um, in, in Greenwich Village, and basically happen to stumble upon crimes every week. You know, not unlike Angela Lansbury did with Murder, She Wrote, or Heart to Heart, you know, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so basically, uh, they're the two stars of the show. They do have a, a guest um, played by Francis DeSale. He was only in the first season, um, but, uh, you know, he was, you know, their, their best buddy, so he would kind of help them. Um, and he was actually a cop. He was a lieutenant. Um, with the homicide division. So, you know, he, he kind of helps them along, but they try not to, like, involve him. They try to solve the crime before uh, the cops can in pretty much every episode. So um, these guys are married. The, the show takes place about five years after uh, they were married and then goes from there. Now, the radio show did not star these guys until the TV show ran in 1952, and then they were doing the radio show and the TV show simultaneously. Um, but before that, for like a decade, um, there were a lot of other, there was sort of a rotating cast. Every like two or three years, they would swap out uh, the actor and actress that would play Mr. and Mrs. North. So, um, but then once the TV show started, then they got Richard Denning and Barbara Britton to not only be on the TV show, but to do the radio show as well. And the radio show ended at the same time as the TV show, 1954. So, um, you know, there are plenty of uh, recordings of the radio show online. I decided not to really delve into that just because, um, you know, the name of the, the segment here on my channel is Classic TV Rewind. Um, you know, so I don't want to go too far back into, like, the radio days. Um, I'm sure it would be interesting to hear... Uh, the other actor and actress and their their take on the the roles um, and how the the show progressed. For example, the first year of the radio show um, was more of a romantic situation comedy, uh, and they were not detectives, which is odd to me because the books and the and the movie they were detectives in. So I don't know why they wouldn't have been that way for the first year of the radio show, but. Uh, but they scrapped that in the second year and then became detectives. So um, the cool thing about early radio shows is you can find troves and troves of them, treasure troves, uh, all over the Internet, um, either, you know, in CD compilations or, um, you know, just, you know, audio on YouTube or whatever. Um, but because of how expensive it was to store film and whatnot, a lot of the early television shows have been scrapped. So... It's interesting because there's tons of like 30s and 40s radio shows, but uh, 50s TV shows are a little harder to come by, you know, unless it was really a big hit. Um, you know, you don't you don't get a lot of those anymore, uh, and some of them weren't even recorded. Some of them were live, of course. Um, but uh, so this set sort of actually speaks to that a little bit because uh, even though there are 50 episodes on here of the 57 total, um, the quality is not great. You know, you look at an I Love Lucy uh, or an Abbott and Costello um, and the, the quality is great because they've been, you know, rerun so often and they've been upkept over the years. Um, however, Mr. and Mrs. North isn't uh, a show that a lot of people know about. I'll be honest, I didn't even know about it 
um, until it came up on Amazon as like one of my recommendations because I buy so many old DVDs of, of TV shows, and it was so cheap. I thought, well, you know, I know Richard Denning from the from the Lucy uh, radio show. I'll give it a shot. Um, but obviously, because it's not something that's been rerun over the years, um, the film elements are not the best. Uh, the company that put this together um, is called Synergy, which I don't even know anything about. I don't think I have any of their other products. Maybe I do another, like, Obscure 50s show, perhaps. Um, so, you know, they probably didn't take the time and money to restore uh, these shows to what they could have been. So a lot of the audio and the film video is is not the best quality. Um, I'd probably give it like a maybe like a six and a half out of ten. Like it's watchable, but it's certainly grainy. And the bigger your TV, um, the the less the quality is going to be. So my TV isn't huge. Um, so you know it's sort of a, a trade off. Um, you know, smaller TV, but you don't get all the, the nasty elements. Um, so let's get to the review here. Um, like I said, I watched all 50 of these episodes. Um, and basically, my take on it is, uh, it is most certainly a product of its time. Um, because in just about every episode, um, Mrs. North is more of the crime solver. She's the one who typically stumbles on the cases in the first place, um, and then she's also the one that usually ends up doing most of the heavy lifting with the solving, and then Mr. North, uh, you know, takes the credit for it, uh, <laughs> because he's the man, um, and, you know, listen, that's a trope that we've seen throughout the, the history of TV and film, um, I mean, a more recent example, I mean, this was the 50s, but a more recent example is the 80s, with Inspector Gadget, in which, uh, you know, Penny and Brain, the dog, tend to solve all of the crimes, uh, and then Gadget sort of takes the uh, the acclaim for it. Uh, although, they said it so that he would think he was the one solving it. Um, so it's not like he was necessarily being a glory hog. Here, um, it's kind of like she will bring Mr. North something and he'll sort of, like, shrug it off or, like, oh, well, you know, that's nice, dear, kind of thing. And then that will be, you know, a major clue in the in the case that cracks it. And then, you know, he doesn't necessarily give her the credit for it, which isn't great. Um, but, look, this is how things were written 60 years ago. Um, and that's something that is still a trope in, like, horror movies today, which they spoof in... Um, the is it the a haunted house with the way the Wayans uh, movie uh, horror movie spoof um, where like the the wife will be like oh you know I I hear something upstairs you know or we got a ghost in the house and the husband's like nah like you're crazy you don't know what you're talking about so it's like it's spoofed in there because it's you know we still see that a lot in movies and TV the the woman sort of um, getting the short shrift of, of what she's actually accomplishing here. Um, so, that's I guess that's why Murder, She Wrote was so groundbreaking, because it really was, you know, Angela Lansbury was doing all of the heavy lifting for these cases. So, okay, so there's a little bit of sexism here for sure. Um, but I will say this. One thing I liked about this show is that it does not necessarily stick to a, um, a dramatic tone. Um, it, there's some dark comedy here. Um, there's even a, a few sex innuendos here and there, which I thought was uh, very impressive for the 50s. Um, you know, I think it was enough that it would certainly go over younger viewers' heads. They weren't being very blatant, but, um, you know, somebody like me who watches all these shows with, you know, uh, not even innuendo, just straight up, you know, sex comments, um, I thought, okay, well, this is, you know, for the 50s, that was, that was pretty progressive. Um, they do sleep in separate beds, of course, a la I Love Lucy and, and all the shows of the time. Um, so nothing, you know, groundbreaking about that. But um, there was, you know, the tone of the show wasn't so set in stone, you know. Like, a lot of the other shows um, of the time and a little bit later, like, for example... Um, I've seen a bunch of the 50s uh, Sherlock Holmes show, and it was very, like, 
you know, it wasn't like the the Robert Downey Jr. movies, you know, it was it was pretty much, you know, straight ahead drama, you know, let's solve the case kind of thing. Um, there were some moments of levity, but here it, it's almost like a, a hybrid um, where they're they're trying to get laughs, uh, and then they stumble upon the murder, and then maybe there's another laugh or two in the mix, but it like it'll start out light, then they stumble upon, and it's not always a murder, sometimes it's a robbery or, or whatever else, but um, but so they'll stumble upon that, and then it gets more dramatic, but then there's still a couple of laugh lines here and there. Um, and that's honestly something that I think has carried through, you know, to, uh, you know, like Law and & Order and, and um, Cold Case or whatever and stuff like that, um, Blue Bloods, you know, where there's, there's, it peppers in a little bit of humor here and there, so you're at least not, you know, you don't fall so down, you know, with your, with your spirits, like, oh my god, all there is is murder in this world, you know, um, and the Norths keep stumbling uh, across it, um, and the other thing is, you can see that these guys clearly love each other, even though um, it, it is definitely a 50s kind of marriage. Um, you know, she's she's definitely taking a backseat to him and his writing career, and, you know, I, I, I'm going to solve this, honey, because I'm the man, you know. They don't get that blatant with it, but it is it's it is a lot like that. Um, so, does it hold up? Um, I would say from that standpoint, like from the sexism, no. Um, do the stories hold up? Um, I would say, you know, more more or less. I mean, obviously, they can't go for too much realism here because, uh, you know, it's the 50s and they're not going to be, you know, swearing or anything. Um, but there is, you know, there's some gun violence. Um, there's, there's some legitimate, you know, murder scenes. Um, where you do actually see people dying, um, or at least, you know, falling to their death, let's say, and then later on they'll, you know, show them laying on the ground or whatever, so you know they're dead. Um, so, I think that is, is pretty cool, you know. I mean, the 50s was, other than sitcoms, you know, it was like cop shows and stuff, uh, and, you know, sports, a lot of boxing and stuff like that, but, um... But so, you know, violence was, was sort of a part of early TV, but it's nice to see that they weren't necessarily shying away from stuff. Um, I can see why it only ran two seasons, though, because it does get repetitive. Um, there are a lot of episodes where it's like, okay, this is very similar to, you know, one that, that they ran, you know, six or seven episodes ago or whatever. Um, but as we see with these shows, that's the template, you know, like, Law and Order, for example, every episode is basically the same. So, I, I can't harsh it too much for that. Um, but, you know, there, there are certainly better detective shows in the 50s. Um, Dragnet comes to mind. And there again, something I haven't really delved into too much, but I remember watching those on the old, you know, Nick at Night in the 80s when they would run them. Um, so, I liked this show enough to stick with it for the 50 episodes. I'll say that. I didn't give up on it. Um, you know, I did the, the whole uh, watch one episode a day, you know, five days a week, kind of like, you know, it would be in syndication or whatever, which is what I did with uh, the Abbott and Costello show as well. I watched them simultaneously, you know, one a day, five days a week. Um, so it's not something I binged, certainly. I, I don't think I could have. If I had watched more than maybe two or three in a row, I think... That would have been enough. You know, I, I think I would have gotten the point um, and not wanted to, to delve any further. But I stuck with it for the 50, so, you know, not horrible. Um, I, you know, if, if you like detective shows, uh, I would say I could probably recommend this. Um, like I've mentioned before, the price is right. You can find this very cheaply. Um, and the quality is, is okay. Uh, certainly for the time period uh, and shows not being kept very well, I think the quality is, you know, decent enough. Um, but I would say if you're not really into mystery-type shows, um, you can probably give this one a pass. I mean, that's, you know, cop shows, mystery shows, that's definitely the element here. Um, you know, the, the humor is okay, um, but it's almost... They're, it's almost like dad jokes, sort of. Like, you know, the, the humor is not very uh, clever. You know, it just sort of is there, and I got maybe a chuckle or two here or there. 
but that's the type of humor it is, you know. If I want to belly laugh at a show from the 50s, you know, I'm going to watch Leave it to Beaver or, or Lucy or something, uh, you know, of that nature. I'm not going to come to Mr. and Mrs. North. Um, it is interesting, though, that, that this was so popular at the time that uh, comedian Ernie Kovacs and his wife Edie Adams on, on Ernie's show out of Philadelphia did a parody uh, quite frequently of this, and I have yet to find that anywhere. I would love to see it. It was called Mr. and Mrs. South. Um, and I do have an Ernie Kovacs collection. I, I don't know if there's any skits of Mr. and Mrs. South on there, but that would be interesting to see. Um, so definitely it was, it was popular for the time, and interesting that it ran so long on radio, 12 years or whatever, and then 26 novels about this, and I had never heard of it before. So um, in that regard, I'm sure this video is not going to get a lot of views. My Abbott and Costello you know, review didn't either, and that's okay. Um, you know, I, I am a, a fan of the entire history of television, and so I'm, I'm delving in of my own accord. If nobody watches, that's okay. Um, however, if, if you did like this, um, I'm, I'm certainly open to suggestions for other shows we can do. And like I said, it's not just shows from the 50s. I just was kind of on a 1952, uh, you know, mood because of the Abbott and Costello show. Um, I'm definitely going to do other series throughout the history of television from all decades. So, uh, you know, give me, give me your ideas on, on what you want. This uh, encyclopedia of television shows, I would love to go through it alphabetically and do as much as I possibly can, um, but a lot of those shows, like I said, are not available anywhere. Um, but, you know, that being said, uh, I'm going to do what I can. I'd like to put one of these up every week or two um, just to kind of keep it going. Um, so hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, comment below. Um, you know, li like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Um, if you stumbled across this and you're not subscribed to my channel, kudos. That is really cool. Um, so I would love to have you subscribe if you like the video. Um, but I guess I should grade this because I grade everything on my channel. Um, so, and, and with these series, I guess I'm just going to give the full series grade and leave it at that. Um, I'm going to give Mr. and Mrs. North a B-. Um, it's, it's certainly watchable. I made it through all the 50 episodes. Um, you know, is it is it groundbreaking? Maybe a little bit uh, for its time. Um, you know, does it hold up? Kind of. Um, but again, I would say only recommended for the mystery fan or the, uh, the police show fan. Uh, or for the classic TV fan, really. Um, but if you're a classic TV fan that likes cop shows, that's going to be your best bet, I would say, or mystery shows. Um, so that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Check out my Abbott and Costello one if you haven't seen that yet. Um, and other than that, we've got more things coming on the channel. The uh, Best of 2018 Movies is up now with uh, my friends Joe and Justin from the Film Fanatics um, and uh, soon to be an Oscar prediction uh, cast. And hopefully that'll be with Justin uh, and the Oscars is in about four days. So I want to get that up probably in the next couple of days. Uh, and that's it. All the Roseanne stuff, of course, too, you know, but that, the Connors has come to a close for the season, so really nothing on that front until the fall when the show returns. But, all right, that's going to do it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.